welcome back to my channel and part four of Girl with Squirrel. You can um, get this coloring page by me <laughs> um, in the um, in my Kofi uh, shop. I have not started an Etsy shop yet. Um, I may uh, need to do that sooner rather than later, but in the meantime. Um, the link for that is in the description box down below and also in the About Me portion of um, the uh, tabs at the top of my channel. So I thought today I would start with the squirrel. And yeah, we're going to use Prismacolors on her. So... Um, just a little reminder before we get started, please just take a second and hit that like button. It, um, it makes a world of difference uh, for me, uh, truly. So please do that and we will get started. So I know a lot of people are really afraid of doing animals and I wish that I could... Um, I wish I could personally like come to your house and show you that it's not it's not that hard at all. Um, I think we just psych ourselves out of stuff and say, "Oh, I can't do that," when um, you know, in actuality, we we really really can't. So, um, yeah. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Um, a lot of my coloring pages will have animals in them. Um, so hopefully that won't d deter um, those of you who are worried about them. It's just, it's just doing them. You know, you get a couple under your belt and, um, and then all of a sudden you realize that they're not as scary as you thought they were. So I'm going to go ahead and push, um, push the camera in and, so we can get a nice close up of what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Alrighty, so I'm going to use Prismacolors again. I think I said that already. Um, and I have pulled a few out that I, I think are the ones that I used um, before. So I'm just going to kind of go for it. There's no, I don't have any like fabulous words of wisdom for you or anything on how to do this. Um, so this is eggshell. which his little face has got some lightness. Let's see, this is kind of light too. So um, when it comes to doing animals, what I would suggest is um, go and um, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Go and find yourself a reference photo. It it makes all the difference in the world. And even if it's not, you know, the photo that the that the um, artist used to create the um, the animal, um, you still have that inspiration of color there in front of you. That's going to really make a big difference. Um, trying to do anything, whether it's drawing or um, if you're trying to draw realistically, um, whether it's drawing or coloring, trying to do it from memory um, is, is just, it's the hardest way to go about trying to do something. And um, most people do not have um, a, an accurate memory of what something is supposed to look like if you're trying to make it look real. If you don't care and you're just trying to, you know, throw something down, that's fine. Then it's not as important. But if you want your animal to look like um, a real animal, then go find a reference picture of that animal. That is... Um, that's just my recommendation. I'm trying to find my espresso. Oh my goodness, I dropped my um <laughs> I dropped my shoebox top full of pencils earlier this morning and everything went everywhere and 
Um, now I can't find my espresso, so I'm just going to pull out a sepia. I just want this edge to be a little bit darker. Um, okay, so I'm going to save the really red part for his body. So I think I'll stick with this um, burnt ochre. Sorry, I probably didn't tell you the name of that one. I'm trying to um, get a little bit more of this filmed this morning before my grandson comes over today. Boy, I sure wish I could... <laughs> I could figure out why the, it, it, it looks like the cameras really. I know this has been the battle that I've had since I started doing my channel was that dumb camera shaking, but I don't have an overhead rig. I have a, um, you know, the, the, the uh, camera or it's actually my iPhone, I film with my iPhone, is actually um, on an arm um, that's attached to my table, but my table has a big, heavy, sturdy, um, like, a, like a dining room table, like a big, heavy table. So I'm not sure why um, the camera shakes so much, because it's not like I'm, you know, doing anything really st that would cause that to happen. All right, this is ch chocolate. I'm not sure. I'm really missing my espresso. I might have to turn the camera off and find my espresso. Yep, I think I do. So bear with me while I find my espresso. Okay, that didn't take that didn't take long. Um, it was hiding with the other group of pencils. So I've already started on the um, next coloring page. And I think if you guys don't mind terribly too much, um, the next set of videos that I do will probably be another one of my coloring pages. And it's only because it's ready to go. Um, I had been working on it. Um, that was eggshell. I'd been working on it for a while. So it's now ready to go. So I hate to, you know, I want to be able to get it out there. Um, and I just find it's better if I, this is um, goldenrod. I just find it's, it will be better for me if I um, get it out there and do the, the next videos. But I promise all of the coloring, um, tutorials will not be my coloring pages. I will I will be doing other pages as well. Okay, so this is terracotta. The timing just kind of worked out this way. So um, the nice thing about this little guy, because he's so little, is there's really not a lot of like super intense detail that you have to worry about getting. Um, and most of the hair work is kind of there for you. So if you just follow along with um, some of the, what you can see as far as where the hairs go, just kind of flicking this eggshell in here a little bit. And then I will come in with goldenrod and lightly, is that a good color? Yeah, I guess that's okay. Lightly go over that, and when you lightly go over it, I'm kind of just glazing the color on top, I'm not pressing down hard at all. Then my eggs, my eggshell um, marks still show. And then we'll go a little bit darker with some burnt ochre. I mean, this, yeah, I would definitely call this a glazing technique. I'm just really lightly adding 
some color on here. Let's see, I want his shading under his eye to be a little bit darker. So let's do some light umber. I want a little bit more terracotta under here. So animal hair is kind of like doing human hair, except your, your hairs are a lot shorter, <laughs> but you still kind of flick. You know, you still... It's very similar. Let's do his his little nose. This is um, light umber. and processing here for a minute. All right, I want to get a little bit of pink. Let's see what I got here. I'll get a little bit of pink in his ear. Something not too pink, though, like henna. Do a little bit of henna in his ear. And light dumper. I think we need a little bit of espresso in here. I picked that. That was burnt ochre. I guess that's okay. All right. I want to switch to terracotta. And in this section, I am going to, rather than just glazing the color where I'm doing a circular motion, I am going to go ahead and um, apply this with flicky, <laughs> little short flicky motions. At least in here, because I want that to, I want those hairs to show up a little bit better. Something about this right now, though, is not exactly right. I think it needs some more hmm, brightness. It needs some more brightness. There we go. A little bit of goldenrod mixed in there. Um, terracotta, I will just glaze, well, I'm not really glazing here, I'm pressing a little bit harder in here, so I want that shadow to be dark. Um, okay, I'm going to glaze, just lightly put this color down here. 
And then I'm going to come in with the eggshell. And flick some highlights. That's good. Let's do that over here, too. So I'm going to just lightly cover the whole thing. with terracotta. And then I'm going to use the eggshell. And then we get the fur look there, like that. Um, Something in here I don't like, so I'm going to fill this in a little bit more. And use my espresso for the shadow. Okay, I'm going to do the terracotta again for his little hand here. And eggshell. Basically kind of just dotting it, you know, just little tiny flicks. And then this will be dark because the grayscale makes it dark. If I keep, I might have to, I might have to invest in a uh, overhead camera, overhead rig. I'm tired of stressing about <laughs> certain things like shaking cameras. Just all right. I think I want to put a little bit of espresso right in here. That might have been too much. So a little bit of goldenrod. Let's see. Let's try eggshell. No, this isn't eggshell. This is sand, which is fine. Actually, I like that. Let's glaze a little bit of that. Yeah, I like that. Um, I'm feeling like I just want a few more hairs to show. Um, is it vivid enough for me? I don't know. Oh, I can't forget the tail. Jeez Louise, that would be... Our little squirrel would be bummed if I didn't give him a tail. All right, so I'm going to start just very, very lightly putting this in here. And I want, I want some eggshell up here on the tip. And I think I'll do some burnt ochre. I'm just starting by laying down like a base coat almost. And then I will get heavier with my color. I'm 
trying to uh, make it so that the tail still looks fluffy. I don't know if I'm succeeding, but uh, let's do a little bit of goldenrod. This is going to show up a lot better once we get the background in. Um, right now, it doesn't it doesn't show up very well, but I think that's just uh, you know because there's no contrast really. And then we'll put some my blender. Just do a little. I don't press very hard when I use this in the in the initial layers. A little bit more this in here kind of feel like he's still not vibrant enough for my taste some espresso down low here. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, Let's try sand under the chin. I want a shadow there, but I don't want it to be a dark shadow. I want it to be a very light shadow. So maybe, I don't know why, but I'm gonna try this sandbar brown. Sometimes you just like get a vision of like, oh, that might work. Yeah, that worked. Okay, good. Um, let's see. If I take white, I have so, so many, I have so many short little whites because I get lazy and just break out open a new one. I really shouldn't do that. So for some reason. I do love these um, pencil extenders because they uh, they don't have those heavy diamond cut ridges like some of these like these other ones. These these are nice for big um, the bigger pencils, but these are great for prismas. But for some reason, some of the prismas are still just a wee bit loose. So I just take a piece of tissue and stick it in there, and then it. It, it's it's a lot tighter. Okay. I'm going to just see if I can get... I know these are like, are like really little teeny tiny details, but I'm kind of a detail-oriented person, so I like those little teeny tiny details. Okay, so that's good. That gave him a little bit of brightness there, but you can still tell that it's, you know, not bright white. Um, okay, for his, I want to do his, something with his eye because there's something like not complete with his eye. So I think I'll put a little bit of white right on the very top there. Um, and then I think I want blue. Um, sky blue light. I'm going to use that as the um, highlight. I'm, I'm finding that 
um, quite often using a blue highlight on the eye instead of black. Oh, sorry, duh, I'm grabbing my black, that's why. A blue highlight on the eye instead of a white highlight um, often gives a bit more realistic highlight to the eye. Um, in this case, it's teeny tiny. It probably doesn't make any difference. Um, so usually I do a blue and then one really bright highlight in white, but it really isn't making much difference on him because he's just too little for it to matter. All right, I'm going to throw some, just a few whiskers. And I'm using my Spiro Farben Black. You guys know I love that one. There we go. I think that I think the squirrel is done. Or at least done well enough cuz he's little. Give him some little some little claws. <laughs> We don't have squirrels like this where I live. We have ground squirrels and little chipmunks, but not these pretty little red squirrels. All right, I'm I'm happy with that. I'm good. I'm good with that. All right, we're gonna start on the. Um, we're going to start on the flowers next, but you know, I'm really curious about something. I'm looking at my gold leaf here, and I still have quite a few bits that did not um, accept the gold that that I missed, um, where I can see tan. And it doesn't it doesn't look bad because it's all shiny, and you don't really really notice it. Um, however. I want to see what happens if I add a little bit of gold pen or gold pencil in there. So I think I'm gonna try that. Okay, so let's start with the least scary of the um, choices. This is my metallic gold Prismacolor. I'm just wondering, that might just be the choice and forget about the gold pen that I have here because there's really not a lot of, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> I'm sure you guys know how that feels. All right, let's just try it. Let's see what it does. I've got a little tissue here. So if I put it on here and I absolutely hate it, um, I can hopefully wipe it off so just testing first you know just putting a little bit on a thingy to make sure that I don't that it doesn't glob and I'm not sure the color might be completely wrong you know because golds come in different in different colors all right well that is a different color but no, it's it's a much more yellow gold than the gold leaf. So I don't I don't think I like it. Um, I don't think that little bit is gonna matter, but I do think the gold Prismacolor is the best choice. Just, I mean, especially, this would be especially handy if um, you were working on white paper, because I think that the any of the little holidays, I think that's what they're called, <laughs> any of the little bits that um, didn't get covered by the gold leaf will be white, and they'll definitely show up a lot more than um, on the tan. So, all right, gold Prismacolor. Um, works pretty well for fixing any weird little gold leaf mistakes that you have. Okay, I guess we are, what am I miss? what is right here? What is that? 
you know, sometimes, sometimes I confuse myself with, um, like, what stuff is. Okay, so that's a flower bud. All right, um, let me pull out the colors that I need for doing the flowers and readjust the camera. And we will, um, we will work on the flowers. Alrighty then. So we're gonna work on the flowers. I've um, I've lost a light, but I, I think it's still um, I'm st I think it's still lit pretty well for our purposes. Just whoops, sorry. I just remembered to lock the uh, focus, so hopefully it, it won't go in and out of focus like it was doing earlier. All right, I'm going to start with sand. Just because if I don't put this in here, I'm afraid I'll cover up what I want to do. And then let's put some of that in. I'm going to talk to my um, sweet husband about building me a rig when he gets home tonight. <laughs> He'll love that. No, he's really good at doing stuff for me. So, Okay, this is light peach. Just see about this nectar. You know, it might be better if I just tell you right up front what pencils I'm using in my hand. Because I have a feeling I'm going to be switching back and forth a lot. So in my hand we have um, uh, sand, um, peach, light peach, um, deco peach, pink, nectar, henna, Tuscan red, and crimson red. And those will all be listed down in the description box below. I just have this feeling that um, as I'm doing this, I'm going to switch back and forth and not be very good about telling you what I'm doing. Pink. So just in case, just know that those are the colors and yeah, I think the problem with the shaky camera is that the arm is extended um, quite a bit and so it, when it's extended out like that, it tends to shake very easily. So I'll get that fixed as soon as I can. All right, let's do some peach. Light peach. I'll pr maybe I'll lay out the colors a bit and then I'll go in and deepen everything and put highlights on everything. This is light peach still. This is light peach. Maybe I'll just do that a lot here. All right, let's come in with some nectar. I 
feel like I should be using something grayer for the shadow, but um, then I think it'll just look weird. So then I'm like, no, I'm just going to use this. I need to experiment and see, because in painting, I discovered that, well, it's not my discovery, but I learned <laughs> that um, you add the color opposite on the color wheel to make something grayer, to tone down, to desaturate. Um, a color and it looks prettier than um, adding gray or black or whatever and I was trying that and it really really works really nicely if you have really vivid colors and you want something a little bit less vivid you just add opposite on the color wheel I thought that was pretty cool um, and I'm wondering if I can do that with colored pencil, too, but I haven't experimented with that, and I probably should. Okay, pink. It's really not going to come together here until I really add the dark darks. And then I think it'll look a lot better. Like this one. something. Sometimes you just gotta wing it. <laughs> um, messy flowers like this I think is um, hard. I think they can be hard if you're trying to be perfect. So sometimes you just have to fake it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Let's see. I don't like the way that one looks. Let's put some Crimson red. Oh, I just realized I left my top fan on instead of turning it off and putting the little one on. Hope that's going to be okay. Right, I want to add some um, sand to this. Bring some yellow into some of these. It's better already. It is just not rich enough for me yet. It needs some more depth. So this is Tuscan Red. So for you guys, a lot of you guys I hear, you know, you're like, oh, I really struggle with animals. I really struggle with flowers, even though I love them and I love, I love them, you know, putting them in the art. I, um, I feel like that's my, 
the hardest thing for me to do. So, instead of shying away from them, I'm going full force <laughs> because I figure if I don't do them, I'll never get better at them. But while I'm getting there, it's really a struggle. <laughs> All right, let's try, I'm not sure about this one. This is the Deco Peach. I don't think it's going to give me enough color. So, regular peach. Just trying to keep it light, but still give it that, um, that depth that I want in there. I'm having a hard time. See, I did, I did it again. I knew I wasn't telling you guys the colors very well. This is henna. But really, um, the colors you use are not all that important. Not in this case, anyway. I think it's... You'll get a similar results no matter what you use, as long as you... Get that depth in there and the really and the really light really light lights sorry bear with me while I try and reach my pencil <laughs> I can't reach oh my goodness okay um, I know I put white on here before but it didn't I don't feel like it showed up enough so you get for pushing hard with a sharp prisma. It's better though. It's showing up. It's showing up better. I think I might call that one done. This is um Nectar. Darken this down here. Try and make that leaf look, or petal, look more rounded. Okay, let's do the next one. Um, so, again, we have light peach. Um, by the way, um, I always post my um, original paintings of my coloring pages. I will always post those on um, my Facebook page, uh, my personal Facebook page. But maybe for my group my Facebook um, group for for the channel. I have my Art by Karen Valentine Facebook group, which there's a link to that down in the description. Maybe I will post the original painting there as well. Um, that way, if you guys need it, you can refer to it for color uh, references and, and stuff like that. Let me know if you think that's a good idea and I can do that. Um, this is Nectar.
Okay, let's do henna. White peach. Mm, nectar again. All right, let's do some Tuscan red. Uh, going really, really light pressure because it's so much darker than the other ones and I want it to be soft and blended and not have too harsh of a line. So. Some of these I'm using to um, to give a highlight, and some of these petals I'm using just to blend the colors that I've got on here. I think some more peach. Okay, let's break out the two reds. Oh, you know what I didn't add? Let's add some um, sand. I like that kind of subtle golden glow. Yeah. Okay, so sand. <laughs> Tuscan red, crimson red, and I think the sand. So these are a little tricky, these little guys. They're rosebuds. See, this would be a case where having the original to look at would probably be really helpful. Oh, I just figured out what that. Okay, well, I don't. What did I do? Don't you hate it when that happens? Okay, I'm gonna make this up. <laughs> when you get all confused, like, oh, I have no idea what that is supposed to be. That's so weird. Okay, well. Yeah. 
I need some green. So this is the leaf. Okay, I think I finally figured it out. Jeez. Okay, and then there's one right here. And one right here. Let's do this one first. Crimson red. I think I. I don't think I need a petal or a. I don't think I need green here. I think this is all just. Fumbly with my pencils today. They keep wanting to jump out of my hand. All right, I am almost done, but I think I want to add some green. I have kelp green out, so that's what I'm going to use. You could probably use anything. I want to add a little bit of green. around the center of these daisies or mums, whatever they are. Part of me wants to even take it a little bit further and see what lime peel does. Yeah, right at the base of the, um, where the white meets the yellow, right there. I'm going to add some of this lime peel. All right. Jeez. I'd like to say that this is the last video where you're going to have to deal with shaking, but I'm afraid it's probably not. <laughs> probably going to take me a couple of weeks to get that rig built because I think my husband's going to have to do it custom for me. Okay, um, so I think we're ready to do the background. Um, for that, I'm going to have to reset the camera because I think we want that camera to be um, far away. But I think we're going to just go ahead and go for it because um, it doesn't, it won't take very long and then this page will will be finished. Oh, wait, no, it won't. Before I do that, I pulled out a couple of pencils. Where are they? I pulled out a couple of pencils because I wanted to um, change her hair up a little bit. And I'm doing that for a couple reasons. Um, one, I wasn't th totally happy with the color of her hair. Um, as it was. I liked the first version that I did, but there was something about the combination that I used, because I used the same exact colors, but something about it I wasn't crazy about. Um, and I pulled out this um, raspberry and black raspberry and put it in her hair right here, and I really liked it. So I'm going to add some of that um, to her hair. Let's see, we might as well start at the top since we're already still in frame here. Um, the other reason that I'm going to do it is because 
as it turns out, and it's just kind of coincidence because the original painting of this one was done um, and she had brown hair. She had dark, dark brown hair in the original. But then when I went to do the coloring, uh, color, the coloring version of my page, I thought, oh, what the heck, let's give her red hair. Not um, thinking far enough ahead in realizing that the next coloring page that that I'm going to do, which is the, the next of um, my pages that I'll have available, um, she has um, ginger hair, not auburn hair. She has like full on ginger hair. So I wanted to add this um, to, to change up the color just a little bit so that they're not too close in their um, in their color, and I really like the addition of the of these pinky red tones. So let's just change her up a little bit. And I probably won't post this finished version um, online since I already posted this version <laughs> online. Um, but I will post this one in um, the, the group, in the group page. just a little bit here and add a little bit of it. I thought I pulled out the raspberry, but honestly, this black raspberry um, is plenty, plenty red. I don't want to, um, I don't want to go too crazy, but she's definitely, she's definitely a lot redder, um, pinky redder than the first one I did. That's okay. It's okay. I like it. It's just a little bit of extra oomph. Okay, so I'm going to um, turn off the camera, reset um, where I'm at, and then we'll um, we'll power through this background because the background does not take very long at all. Okay, so um, I'm going to use my gelatos and my short bristled stencil brushes. Um, there's links to both of those um, down below in my um, Amazon store. There's a link and it'll take you to all of my um, favorite supplies that I use. This one is Blue Topaz. I thought we'd see if maybe this um, which we'll call it this setup works really well for you to be able to see what I'm doing here. This is um, Blue Moon. I just couldn't remember which ones of these I actually used on this page, so I, I'm gonna use them both. <laughs> Put them both on here. I know, I know, I know. Okay. Okay, so. What I'm hoping that you guys will like about the coloring pages is that it comes with a built-in textured background. So I know that um, a lot of people have pro have trouble with backgrounds. They don't like doing them or they um, maybe they take too long for them to do them or they just, you know, don't know what to do or whatever. But what's What's nice, I'm hoping that you will find about these, is that um, you can lay your color on top of them, especially if you're using um, sheer colors or water media or whatever. Um, let's see, sorry. I just realized I started at the bottom and I probably should have started at the top. Let's do that, I'll, go, I'll back up and just come up here. Ooh, how do I do this so my hand's not in the way? Good question. Um, uh, yeah, that's the only problem with these. Um, <laughs> if 
for filming is that my hand really has to be um, straight down, which makes it get in the way of the camera quite a lot. Okay, anyway, so what I was saying was, as you um, lay your color down on top, you still get the um, texture coming through. Um, so the background is twice as easy to do because you put your colors in, but the the texture shows in underneath. So anyway, I'm hoping that you guys will find that a benefit. Um, I apologize if my hand or arm is in the way. One of the other things that I love about the gelatos, and I don't, is that they don't really seem to stick much unless you purposefully try and make them stick. They don't really stick much on top of the um, the color pencil that you've laid down. So it makes it nice to be able to do your background afterwards and not really worry about what you've the work that you've put down so far. Okay, more blue topaz. You know, I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna switch places of these two things because that way I'm thinking that maybe my hand won't be so much in the way. Maybe that's better. Blue topaz. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna, you know, I've just decided. I've made an executive decision. I have a piece of paper. I guess this will work. Just something to go underneath my um, nice black background there. I don't want to get it dirty. I think I'm going to get, just go ahead and move these gelatos all the way out to the edges and just cover up that um, printing border that always happens on these when you print, at least it does on mine. I don't, I don't really have the ability to print edge to edge, so I always get a border. That's better. Okay, I want more blue, I think. The green was nice, but I think what I really want is the blue. And this blue topaz seems to be the one. I just love how much much faster backgrounds go with these gelatos. When I first started coloring, I was doing full color pencil backgrounds because I do like to have backgrounds in. And, um, oh my God, they took so long. And, you know, I would blend with mineral spirits. I did all that stuff to try and get it to go faster and look nicer, but to be honest, I haven't found anything that I like for backgrounds as much as the gelatos. Because in truth, after it dries, um, you can go back over it with color pencil and, um, and change the color, you know, add like glaze colored pencil over the top of it where it's um, it's 
going to give you a different look. Or if you if you can't get comfortable and get in there tight to whatever it is that you're doing, you can you can almost always find a colored pencil close enough in color that you can just fill in where you where you need to. So these are, um, you know, they're moist um, right now. And they're even going to be moist on my page just a little bit. Um, but once they, once they cure or dry, um, they're permanent. They don't, they don't rub off or anything like that. I went a little bit crazy and got some. I don't know that I care. <laughs> I think I'm trying to go. F I'm not taking as much time as I probably should because I'm probably speeding through this. I grabbed another couple of minutes while my grandson is taking a nap. <laughs> so... Try and get this out for you for tomorrow, which would be Saturday. Nope, I take that back, which would be Friday. Tomorrow is Friday. I think I can get it up for tomorrow. Just picking up these little bits. Okay, so time for me to lift this. Let me lift this up a little bit. So I make sure that I'm in frame. Switch to my bigger one again. And maybe, maybe I'll try the blue moon again. I think I'm gonna come in with some white on top too. <laughs> I thought I was going to have this beautiful um, gray uh, piece of, it's actually mat board, spare mat board that I would use as the background, you know, for my videos. And I thought it would be, in my head, I'm like, oh yeah, that'll be easy to stay clean because I'm just using colored pencils. <laughs> I already have marks and stuff all over it, so we'll see. It's a little too expensive to just use once and then toss away, so. <laughs> but I wanted something solid rather than the, um, uh, what do you call it, the, um, the grid of my um, cutting board that I usually use because <laughs> all right you might get a kick out of this because like uh, anal retentive me that I am um, when the camera was not perfectly straight on so that all the lines were nice and square in the film in the video um, it drove me nuts it drove me absolutely and completely nuts so I solved that problem by just switching to, to solid um, and then that worked out better. All right, so I colored the whole edge here, but then I've got this edge that's that I didn't use my colored pencils on. So I'm wondering if I can solve that easily um, and just, I just put gelatos on there. So I've got like a what have I got? I've got a lot of them. 
got to be one that'll work. Peppercorn could be too dark. I might just come in with my pen, with my pencil. I don't think I have the right color. I can do that off camera. You don't need to watch me doing that. Right? <laughs> she says as she realizes it's really bugging me. It's really bugging me. Unless I do that. Oh, look. Like magic, it looks better already. <laughs> All right, guys, um, let's see. I'm going to, I don't think I can get further away, but I can do a little, um, you know, one of these deals. You can see the the glory that is my messy desk. Um, but at least this way you'll be able to see the piece in its entirety. So there she is. I will come in and just darken up that line because that just, now that this is all the same color, it's bugging me. But there she is. We managed to do this in not too many videos. So, um, yeah, I hope you, uh, I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope the, um, it's gonna pile. There we go. I hope the uh, the shaking of the camera was not too too terribly distracting for you and. Um, Okay, I think that's it. I'm finished rambling. <laughs> I will get this video edited and um, get it up so I can get it up for you as soon as possible. And then um, I'm thinking about maybe doing a video on um, not being afraid to do grayscale because I know it looks really intimidating. And um, I do have a video already, actually, um, on the channel about um, how to lighten great grayscale, but I think I'm going to do another one again, just um, just specifically for grayscale, and it'll be super short, and it'll show you guys how to um, lighten your digital image before you print to get the um, the best um, possible results for you. And some of the things I have to show you are ways that you can lighten specific areas of the page instead of the whole entire page, um, which I think will come in really handy for, for a lot of you guys. So, all right, that is all. Until I see you next time, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Happy coloring. Love to you all. Bye.